Not only did I get one offer I couldn't refuse, I got two offers I couldn't refuse. Story time. Love them. Sliding in on this one real quick before the video actually starts. I've never done this before, but damn, I talked a lot. I just edited it. This video is an hour and 50 minutes long. So I want to give you the common courtesy. I split this up into two separate parts. Yes, I kind of repeat myself a little bit and I do talk a lot. That's just how I am. Thank you for watching if you watch the whole entire video. But yes, this is part one and then head on over for part two and such. I talk a lot. <laughs> What's going on guys? Big DB back on the Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, it's gonna be quite a story time, so be sure to grab something to eat uh, <laughs> while you listen to me. Basically, it's gonna be a story time on my whole journey as far as pinball. I'm gonna be talking about a couple of barcades and such, my experiences with pinball, playing pinball, some of like the plus and the negatives that I've experienced as far as playing at a barcade, then a lot of people are dying to know, you know, how did I afford getting these two brand new inbox Jersey Jack pinball machines. So I will go into detail as far as the offers that I guess I got slash I made an offer uh, for these two pinball machines. So there's a lot, just get ready. It's gonna be a long story time. I got so much stuff bottled up. I'm dying to get this, you know, just out. Um, you know, some people might be watching, might be looking at getting a pinball machine. Um, just get ready. I have, I have a lot to talk about, and I hope I just keep it a nice, steady flow. You know the deal. If you're not following me on all the socials, what are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP. I have the link down below. Click it. It's just a convenient link that showed you all my socials. And also be sure to, wherever the animation goes that I put it, be sure to like, subscribe and all that you would see everything especially you know most of the time nightly how much these machines get played not to mention the kiddo playing around it's kind of funny now she went from playing toy story 4 to now she goes i want to play the bad guy game <laughs> so she now is flipping on the godfather it's just been an amazing journey what are you waiting for be sure to follow me you would see the whole my daily life go Go, not now maybe, no, go now maybe if you want. Whatever, just be sure to hit the link, the link tree, it shows you all my socials. What are you waiting for? Go follow. <laughs> now I said in the beginning, this is gonna be a long video, it's gonna be a lot of word bomb and I'm just gonna be talking straight to the camera. I do like this because I kind of use this as like a, not a stress reliever, but I just like to talk. So I use this, whoever stays tuned and watches the entire video, awesome. Basically, like I said before, I'm gonna give you my whole journey as far as pinball. Um, you know, I'll even tell you a quick tiny story about my first experience with the pinball machine when I was younger, but mostly I'm going to be talking about now, currently, you know, at 32, 33 years old, uh, my journey with pinball. As far as barcades, like where I am right now, there's really not that many barcades that have pinball machines. Uh, I'm going to tell you my, you know, pluses and minuses to a barcade experience. Um, I do get this question a lot. They go, hey, Vic, man, you must have hit the lottery for you to buy two brand new inbox Jersey Jack pinball machines. I'm going to be doing a whole thing. I'll tell you my journey. Um, you know, I don't want to talk about finances, meaning somebody's like, how can I afford these? And I can't really help you that much. Um, I'll tell you, obviously, I will tell you the prices that I paid for these things. You might be shocked to hear about the prices that I paid for it in a good way, not in a bad way. Um, you know, some people are like, hey, Vic, I don't understand. How did you, you know, get all this done? I don't want to tell finances to you, meaning I, I'm not a financial advisor, but if you work hard, you could reward yourself. That's basically it. But uh, yes, I'm very excited to explain everything. Just again, journey with pinball, you know, me going, driving 80 miles, two hours out to play the Godfather LE. I'll tell you my experiences with that. There's just a lot, a lot of stuff. So grab a sandwich or something and just get ready for a long story time. <laughs> now for the people that are new here, I am proud to say my first ever real pinball machine is the Godfather Collector's Edition. Um, I wasn't looking at getting a real pinball machine until the promo video came out on this. For my 33rd birthday, I spoiled myself a little bit and I bought not just the Godfather. This is the first one I could probably say that I swiped the credit card on 
and it was delivered to me. This is the first machine I have ever gotten. Then about, I would say a couple of days later or almost up to a week, Toy Story 4 came into my life. <laughs> uh, it's actually kind of funny. I swiped the credit card for this and then the next day I swiped the credit card for Toy Story 4. This right here, my godfather came directly from Jersey Jack Pinball. It came right off the line and then right into my house. Awesome stuff. I will tell you the story about Toy Story 4. Basically, I did find somebody on Pinside that had a great offer that I could not refuse. But again, uh, there's going to be a lot of talking on this one. Let's first start with some basics. Let's talk about the first journey or my intro to pinball. I guess the first little short story is I'll tell you my first experience with a pinball machine as I was younger. Uh, family vacation, we went, this is probably when I was like six years old. Uh, family vacation, we went to Pennsylvania. Um, and... They did it kind of smart. They had kind of like this, uh, what's the wording? It was just basically like a, I don't want to say the word lunchroom. Uh, basically it was like a dining hall, uh, almost like a mall kind of setup where like, you know, choose your food. I was like six or seven, so I barely remember, but my first ever pinball machine that I played as a kid is Rocky and Bullwinkle. <laughs> I know, very left field. This place was very smart. They didn't have any arcade games. They only had one pinball machine. There was a ton of kids buy it. I probably spent so many quarters on it because again, six years old, there was nothing to do um, but play pinball. So I didn't, I'm not like I play it now. It's just, you know, put 50 cents and then after two minutes of flipping around, you lose the game and you've lost 50 cents. And I had to basically ask my parents for a bunch of quarters. But yes, my first <laughs> experience with pinball was Rocky and Bullwinkle. Now at the age of 32, 33, uh, uh, honestly, like where I'm at, uh, even growing up, I grew up in Queens. Uh, New York. I'm now in Long Island, New York. Uh, even growing up, there wasn't any arcades by me. Um, same thing when it comes to pinball machines. There was no real pinball machine. So basically, the next step up was me building my virtual pinball machine. That was basically the next step for me getting at least a feel of virtual pinball. And yes, that pinball machine I made when I was 30. The promo video, you can see my shirt wearing 30. That was my birthday gift to me, was making my own virtual pinball machine. So yes, from six years old to 30, I have not flipped at all. Now, when I was building my virtual pinball machine, I dabbed into virtual pinball a little bit while I was building my arcade cabinets from a couple of years ago when I started this whole thing. It wasn't really as good as it is now. I mean, you're talking about like VP, what is it, like seven or eight before nine is when I kind of started. So I was just kind of shocked to see that you could get all these tables on the computer, but then actually having an actual virtual pinball machine you know, with the orientation of the screen on, you know, where it is to make it mimic a real pinball machine, it is a whole different outlook on life. But yes, uh, you know, again, you're going from six years old to, you know, 32. Uh, you know, I'll probably say, I'll give it to you, maybe 31 years old is when I went and got back into pinball, I would say, or I should say started pinball. Because my whole six-year-old thing, I don't really count that. You're, it's just like my, my, my kiddo now, you know, she's just flipping. She doesn't really know what's happening. She doesn't remember the game. She remembers, I can't really say that she can't remember the game. She remembers the call outs. It's kind of amazing to watch her and like she'll, she'll go ball one locked and she'll, when the game starts, choose your family. She always, it's, it's kind of crazy how kids are, but yes. Now, again, when I was younger, you're talking like from six years old and on, you know, I was born in 1990. So talking about 1996. I remember one specific place, they didn't have pinball, but as far as like an arcade gaming thing, as far as kids' birthday parties, there was a place called the Kids Place 2. That's what it was called. And it was basically an arcade, and you know, you have your birthday party there, it's set to free play, and you go, but never had any pinball machines. But yeah, now we have, by me, I have this place called Round 1. Uh, as far as now, you're going into, you know, pinball arcades, or I would say barcades, but it's minus the liquor. Um, brand new opened up pinball Long Island beautiful place I went there about I would say two or three months ago before I even got into this uh, that was kind of like my stepping stone getting back into pinball uh, and then I discovered that there's a couple of small places maybe one or two in like Brooklyn that are like laundromats that have like four or five machines I don't know if you could count that as an arcade and then I discovered silver ball out in Asbury Park, New Jersey, which I will explain that journey there. But again, going to Pinball Map, out here in Long Island where I am, again, I grew up in Queens, and now I'm in Long Island. Uh, it's really borderline Queens and Long Island where I'm at. Um, there's not many pinball places. 
And luckily with the pinball map, you can kind of see that there's not that many pinball places. But uh, as far as like a 10 mile radius to 15, 20 mile radius, I do have round one arcade and I do have pinball Long Island. Now pinball Long Island, I don't remember when they opened up, but I do remember seeing the advertisements. They just opened up and I said, you know what? I'm going to go check out this pinball Long Island place because I want to show my support and all that. I probably went after like the two weeks that they opened up. I went and uh, I checked it out. And the day I went to go check it out, they were actually doing a pinball tournament. It was their first ever tournament. And those guys, I mean, I don't remember the exact date. Uh, you know, I'd probably say we're talking maybe, I don't know, March? March or April of uh, this year, of 2023, right? Yeah, I would, I would give that, that date range. Uh, that's when they opened up. And I said, you know what, I'm gonna go show my support, local place. I went there when they opened. I think it was like 12 o'clock or two o'clock they opened. And uh, I didn't leave until about 11 o'clock at night. Uh, again, it was their first ever tournament. First place was a PlayStation 5. Uh, but I was like, okay, this is perfect. I'll be able to join this tournament. It's awesome, you just pay your day pass and you could join in on the tournament that day. So it was like a win-win to me. I did not win. Um, but it was just kind of cool. You walk in and it, I mean, these guys had over, uh, you're t at least over a hundred machines. Uh, I met the owner, really cool dude. Actually, if you are in New York, um, and if you go on Craigslist, you might know this guy by the name of Gus Cade. Uh, he's got great, great stuff on Craigslist as far as arcade cabinets. He does like full restores. And apparently this guy, from my understanding, when I spoke to him, he is Gus Cade. He either is Gus Cade or works with Gus Cade, but his name's not Gus. So take with that as you would. But yes, Pinball Long Island, shout out to them. Great place. I spent, as you could hear, uh, you know, going, let's just say, 2 o'clock to 11 o'clock. I spent nine hours <laughs> playing there. And the price was affordable, 20 bucks. All day pass, and I was able to enter the tournament. So it's a no-brainer. It was a great value. I did enjoy my time there. I got to play a bunch of games that I've seen as far as virtual pinball to an extent. Um, this is where I'll go into like, you know, my experience now with these barcades uh, and some of the pluses and minuses to it. Now, before I get into the whole thing, I forgot to mention about Round One Arcade. That's in Hicksville. Um, they're really an arcade. Great arcade. I like what they do. Basically, you could pay uh, 90 minutes and you could use all the green swiper card games um, you know, you get to play the shooters and all that. They have a lot of stuff and they have the newer stuff. Uh, you know, they, they get stuff that's shipped overseas. So round one is awesome. Um, you know, they had like the new Fast and Furious with like the whole, I, I posted on my Instagram, it was like eight screens, it was like eight 65 inch screens. Awesome, awesome stuff. I like their value, but I didn't know this. Downstairs, they actually do have the bowling alley. And they had a couple of Stern pinball machines. So it was kind of cool. When I was at the register, I saw this thing. That they have a banner that says Stern Army. Now, again, this store I'm telling you right now, this is before Pinball Long Island. And again, it doesn't really count to me. It's a very kind of tiny story of my experience with pinball. But basically, they had a thing that said Stern Army. I was like, you guys have pinball machines? He goes, yeah, go downstairs. Sure enough, I go downstairs, and they have about two, four, six. I would say about 10. They have 10 newer modern Stern machines. I mean, they had like Iron Maiden, they had the Jurassic Park, they had a Led Zeppelin, they had Deadpool, they had TMNT, you know, kind of like the newer stuff there. So it was kind of cool. I got excited. I was like, wow, this is really the first time I've, since six years old till now, I saw a pinball machine live. And I was like, whoa, these are way nicer than I remember. <laughs> Again, comparing it to Rocky and Bullwinkle. Um, my only downside to that though, is that I had to actually pay to play. Um, meaning, you know, you got to get the credits and all that, and you have to swipe the card, and I think the a pinball game was like four credits. And uh, again, round one, they have it where you could basically, uh, for 90 minutes, you pay like, I don't know, 20 bucks for 90 minutes, but you could play all the arcade games with the green swiper. Basically, that translates to all the regular games. You could play like the shooting games, and uh, just no ticket redemption games, no crane games, and no like DDR Guitar Hero style games. You could just basically play, you know, that's where I got my idea for the Buy Vic cabinet design. That's where you could play like those type of games. Basic arcade games and shooters, you could get that for 90 minutes for 20 bucks. So I was like, okay, cool. I was kind of upset now that I could not even play 
pinball. So I had to go upstairs and you get the whole thing where, oh, you're right now on a 90 minute clock. So if I switch you over to credits, now you're gonna lose a 90 minute. It, it, right there, I was like, I was just turned off. I was like, all right, you know what, I'm, I'm just, I walked out. Uh, and then I went back because I had to get something at Ikea. There's an Ikea right there. While I was waiting for this thing at Ikea, I was like, all right, I'm gonna go there to play some pinball. And uh, I went and it's just something, there's a taste in my mouth when it's like, okay, I need, let's say 20 credits. And uh, I don't know, it's 20 bucks for 20 credits, whatever. And uh, you know, you swipe the card, you get like a five minute game. And then now you swipe the card again. And now you go from, you know, 20 credits to 15 to 10. And then within about like, I don't know, 30 minutes, I'm out of credits. So it's kind of like, uh, I wasn't a fan of that. So that's my little thing with, um, uh, the round one and all that. Now I'll get into the whole thing as an experience with the, you know, barcades and, you know, my pluses and minuses, I guess. Now again, I know I talk a lot. I repeat myself just to keep you up to date on where I am. I have yet to talk about the Godfather and my like thing there. I'm still just talking about pinball in general. So again, once I experienced round one and I had to pay for credits, it was just, it was kind of, a, it was, it was a turnoff, but the biggest thing when it came to round one, they were, it's, it's downstairs in like the bowling alley area. And, uh, and again, I guess this is, I could say this towards Stearns, but it depends on the, on the place. The big thing, I, the big issue I have with these barcades is I cannot hear the game. And when I cannot hear the game, it is a huge turnoff. So again, you know, what I was saying before about uh, when I went to round one, I was playing like TMNT. I was like, I've seen so many things about TMNT. I love the artwork because they could see, I was like, wow, this is, it looks great. But like when you press the start button and if the barcade or whatever has the volume low, and again, it's a bowling alley and like a pool hall right in the same area. If I can't hear the game, I'm just flipping. I'm just hitting the ball. And uh, again, it's kind of like, you know, this right now, that this part of the story is like my first stepping stone into pinball. And it kind of made me just not want to play pinball. Uh, again, in my mind, I'm like, I spent 20 bucks. I got 30 minutes. Uh, if Ray was here, he would probably make a hooker comment. <laughs> but I spent 20 bucks on 30 minutes and I was like, I didn't get, I didn't have fun. It wasn't, it wasn't that great. I did get to experience a machine. I was like, wow, you know, especially with Stern and their newer LCDs. It looked great. I was just so amazed. I'm still amazed now when I look at pinball machines. I'm just so amazed at the play fields, the lights, the screens. I'm just more, I'm so like focused on like mechanical things than the actual gameplay. So again, in the heat of the moment, I'm just in awe looking at it. But as I get to play, I'm like, I can't hear anything. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just flipping. And basically I left. Then, you know, talk about maybe a month or two later, that's when Pinball Long Island made their announcement of opening up. I said, okay, you know what? I'm gonna go and, and give this a whirl because now it's strictly pinball. Those guys have like two arcade machines and that's it. It's in the, in the front, but those guys are strictly pinball. I mean, it's pinball Long Island. You can't, it's not arcade Long Island, it's pinball. So they have all pinball. So now when I get into pinball arcade, again, they have over a hundred machines. Clean layout, I'll probably just throw a picture of you know, maybe from their website or something like that. It's just left side pinball, right side pinball. They have a big alleyway in the middle and they have like two or three machines there. They even had a back room with more pinball machines. But as I entered, I was just in awe to see real versions of pinball that I was playing on my V pin. So, you know, they did have a, they did have a Simpsons. They did have a Cactus Canyon. Uh, when I did go there, uh, that's where I experienced Earthshaker. And that's why I said this, I was like, oh man, I gotta now play Earthshaker as a bi-week table. I believe if I remember correctly, when I went there was when I was doing the bi-week for either the Simpsons or Super Mario Bros. And they had those machines and I was like, whoa, I could at least experience these machines live and in person. So I did play the Sopranos, great table. Again, now you gotta think now, this is me getting back in, uh, really, you know, really now playing pinball. Uh, again, 20 bucks all day pass. I'm already a happy kid because I'm like, okay, I'll last more than 30 minutes <laughs> for 20 bucks. So I was like, I was already like, okay, I'm at ease. And I told the wife already, like, I'm going to play pinball today. Uh, my phone will be off kind of vibe. And uh, I walked in with great, great vibes. Um, again, I played the Sopranos in person. And I'm like, wow, it's not really anything like virtual pinball. It's just a whole different dynamic. Virtual pinball, though, 
gave me the hint and the taste of, you know, the gameplay to it. What do I have to do? The objectives to it. But, you know, when you actually see wire forms and you actually see a physical bull rolling around, it's really two different things. So now, in that heat of the moment, I was like, okay, I understand that the real pinners, why they don't like virtual pinball. But I'll talk about my rant with that later on. Virtual pinball, though, is still, to me, um, it's, it's a great idea and it's a must uh, versus actual machines, mostly because of the pricing. Uh, you, we'll get into that later on. But the one downside now, uh, pinball Long Island, luckily, though, the sound, it was, I was able to hear the game. Not to sure where the Sopranos was, it was like in the back. Um, and there wasn't that many people there because there was a lot of EM tables. Um, they had Earthshaker, they had a taxi there. Again, I went though at like two o'clock, so people were like working. So it's kind of like me and like four of the people. I was able to just, I was like a kid in a candy store. Like, great, I'm alone. Nobody could bother me. Let me go. And I had fun with it. Then it was like, when it was like eight o'clock when the tournament started, that's when you saw people coming in. And, uh, you know, basically now you have like, what's the word? You just have noise. Um, they luckily, the sound, they had like a sound, you know, they were playing music, but it was kind of like very low, which is, I like that. Um, and I was able to hear the game. That's where I'm getting at. I was able to hear the game, but the one downside was I was very excited to, put, to see a Simpsons pinball party. My V pin is Simpsons pinball party theme. So I was very excited to, to play it. I pressed start though. And after like five minutes, I actually walked away because there was issues with the game. Um, and this is kind of like where now, like, you know, barcades, uh, I'm hoping they fixed it, but you know, granted, yes, you have a hundred machines and I don't know if they have maintenance employees there. While I was there, there was nobody maintaining, you know, meaning nobody's open up play fields and lifting and checking. So I don't know when they do it. I'm not going to argue that, but you know, uh, Simpsons, it's very heavy on the mode. When you go into the garage door, you start a mode. And for some reason on their machine, you would enter the garage door and that was it. The ball, the machine now would go through like a ball search cycle, but the clock for your mode already started. So by the time it's going to say like, Hey, where's the ball or it drops a ball. The clock starts like 30 seconds. Now I'm at 10 seconds to hit, you know, auto school. It was a turn off. I was like, okay, I, I can't play this game now. It defeats the purpose of the, I cannot play it. Um, they did have a Cactus Canyon. I was very excited to see that. I was like, oh man, this is great. Right flipper didn't work. So that was like another machine that I was like, oh, I got like excited to see and uh, the right flipper didn't work. So now I'm like, I want to play Cactus Canyon. You know, that, that was like the one thing. You can now take this as a positive to buying your own machines. And yes, I do maintain mine every week. I do a whole cleaning and everything. I might be OCD on it, but I do maintain mine. But Yes, it was kind of heartbreaking to see that. Pinball Long Island also has Jersey Jack pinball machines. Now, while I'm there, I got to see Jersey Jack pinball machines. I've never seen it. I didn't even know the company. I really didn't know any, I didn't know this company. I was like, what is it? I just know Stern. And luckily with Pinball Long Island, they have the newer Sterns, which is great. Uh, my buddy, I keep mentioning him, Project Canada. He's got a Godzilla. And I told him I'm going to Pinball Island. He's like, oh, see if they have a Godzilla, try to play Godzilla. I flipped on Godzilla, but I'm big on like theme. I don't know Godzilla. So I probably played two games and I walked away, but I at least got to witness and experience the newer Stern LCD back boxes. And again, Pinball On had quite a plethora of games to play. Again, I played Mario Bros. They had like, the, I didn't even know there was a WWF. I think it was a WrestleMania. Uh, and that had the old school, you know, DMD. Uh, the dot matrix DMD. So I'm like, oh, you know, I was able to see everything. It was kind of like, you know, that day It really was like, wow, you could see even they had EM. So I got to experience a couple of EM So I went EM to you know, your standard DMD to now stern LCD DMDs and then like I said I did see Jersey Jacks. They had though they had a dialed in they had a Wizard of Oz They had a Pirates of the Caribbean. I don't know if they had a Hobbit but those were like the, oh, and they had a Guns N' Roses. So those are like the main ones that they had. So again, you know, it's kind of visually with these Jersey Jacks, you could visually tell it's a Jersey Jack just by the back box. Um, again, though, I didn't know anything about Jersey Jack. I didn't, I didn't know anything. I just knew Stern. But it was just kind of cool to see like, whoa, what is this big ass screen going on over here? 
Uh, I did flip on Guns N' Roses, and I did actually vote this on Pinside, but my experience with Guns N' Roses, and again, keep in mind, it's the same day. This is now, like, it's day one of pinball for me. I haven't flipped. Guns N' Roses, for some reason, it's got, like, a scoop right in the middle, and every time I hit that, which you hit that quite often, like, in the first flip of the game, it would shoot straight down the middle. Uh, so I played Guns N' Roses for like two games and I just kept going straight down the middle and Again, this is more towards the night. So I'm like, is there something wrong with this machine? Why is it going straight down the middle? Um, but anyway, like I said, I at least got to experience some stuff uh, Wizard of Oz uh, people were like hovering over it um, I think I forgot which one they did have one Jersey Jack that was off I did play Pirates of the Caribbean watching that pirate ship on the right. It was just in my mind like whoa you know, look at how much stuff you could do inside of a pinball machine. That pirate ship for a Pirates of the Caribbean was huge. It's a big mechanism and it goes left and right and it, it was pretty cool. But yes, Pinball Island had a lot of machines to, to look at. But, like I said, some of the older cabinets that I wanted to play, unfortunately they, they, didn't, they didn't work. That day, again, we played at a tournament. They did a 10 game tournament. It was my first ever experience with a 10 game tournament. but. That day, I played a lot of Earthshaker. Earthshaker was an amazing game. I never looked at it, but when I looked at it in person and I played it, I was like, wow, this game is actually really fun. And I just wanted to beat the high score on Earthshaker. Now, as far as the tournament thing, there's many ways you can do tournament. I met a couple of people there. It was pretty cool. There was a lot of people though. I mean, I think we had, I think he had like 30, let's just say 30 to 40 people. We got separated into two separate groups. So 20 and 20, and what they did is that they, they it was 10 machines. Um, you had to play 10 games, you had only one game, and then they just record your high score. And they did it by points. So whoever had the highest score, you got three points. The second to highest score for that specific game, you got two points. It was like a point system and all that. So it was a cool idea. I met one dude there, and he's like, God, this tournament is just dragging. I was like, I've never been to a tournament, so I'm, I'm having fun. It just kind of sucks, though, because you only have one game, and that's it. And then not to mention, you know, you have a lot of people waiting to play this game. Uh, maybe 10 games is a lot, but basically, Pimmel uh, took that criticism, and they, I, I, I haven't been there since, but I would assume that they took it. But one guy was like, this is not fun. I am not having fun, and he left. And I was like, oh, uh, I'm having fun. <laughs> I'm just happy to just be flipping. But it was kind of cool because the 10 games was very, like, separated. Uh, we had to play Terminator. Um, we had to play Spider-Man, which was really great. Uh, that was another one that I did a live stream on. I loved Spider-Man. I'm not a Spider-Man fan, meaning I'm not a comic book fan. But playing Spider-Man, that, that was a great table. I had a lot of fun with that table. But I didn't know the rules. Like, I'm just there, literally you press start and flip. Not to mention, they don't tell you what 10 tables you have to play. They tell you in the heat of the moment. So it was like... You know, you gotta go in order, so let's just say the first table was, um, world, it was, a um, uh, the poker game. World Poker or whatever. Um, you know, while you're waiting to play World Poker, you could go and play the other game. So I was playing a little bit, but it's just not enough time to, like, understand rule sets and how to score. Uh, but the hardest thing also was, like, you kind of press start, and you have that thing in your mind where it's like, okay... I'm gonna try to do my best, but I feel like if I'm taking too long, then everybody now is annoyed because they have to wait for me. And then that's when you have a crowd behind you watching you. So now it's like, oh shit, now you got more stress on you because if you suck, you suck. And anyway, it was a fun experience. Uh, it was kind of cool that we're going down the list of the 10 tables and out of the 10 tables, I scored second place on one table. So I was like, oh cool, I heard my name. So. I was happy. I didn't win a PS5 though, but it was just kind of cool that they do tournaments and yes, that was great. So the one thing about like talking over your pinball glass, you get, you spit and there's dots everywhere now. It kind of annoys me, but I'll do it later. But yes, that was my journey with pinball Long Island. It was great. It was a great stepping stone to just get into pinball. I'm not going to say bring me back into pinball because I never was in pinball until pinball Long Island. So it was just kind of great to see like the LCD and all the newer stuff and the lights. And I was like, wow, I've been missing out. A lot uh, with pinball um, but the biggest thing that I said when I was there and I saw the Jersey Jack machines the one that caught my eye was that it did have the headphone jacks and again going back to what I was saying before the biggest issue I had and I'm gonna say had not have I had is that I couldn't hear the game in pinball on I could hear the game though so that was awesome but 
I hear my game and then I hear the four games here and then I hear the two games behind me. So it's like, you know, I was trying to play like the wrestling game or even Super Mario Bros. Super Mario Bros. luckily was tucked in a corner, but I was able to hear it, but then next to me was a, a wrestling game. And, you know, basically if somebody's playing it, you're fighting audio. So I'm like, ah, I, I have a big issue with, with sound. Like, I'm also, I feel like I'm not diagnosed, but I feel like I'm partially deaf. <laughs> if you're trying to, if you're yelling out to me, I might not hear you. It might be because of, the, you know, whatever, I play my music loud or whatever. But yes, if I can't hear the game, it is just, it's a turn off. Um, but again, Jersey Jack though, when I saw, I didn't know they had this again. I didn't know Jersey Jack. They actually had a headphone jack input and I'm like, oh shit. I'll bring my headphone jacks next time, my headphones. And um, I did notice though that Stern didn't have that. I believe Stern has an add-on for that, but now the barcade place has to spend the money for this add-on. Um, but anyway, I was going home, just, you know, as I'm driving, I'm like just reliving everything. I'm like, I had fun. I would definitely go and visit and, and you know, check it out again. Uh, then, I would say about maybe two or three weeks later, we get the release video for this. <laughs> Today's a perfect time to cut for part one. Not too bad, about 30 minutes long, but now the next part, you're probably looking at close to an hour and 10. It's really about my excitement and you know, the whole thing of why I bought Godfather and Toy Story. So this is really the main gist of the video. Be sure to check out part two. Yeah.